Hey guys, it is Danny and welcome to this update video on the tropics. And so guys, in this video, we're going to be talking about two disturbances that are headed to the Caribbean. So if you're in the Caribbean, you're likely to be affected by either of these, especially in the Eastern Caribbean. And so we have our Invest 95L, which is highlighted in orange. And then we have that new area of interest just identified this morning, but our models have been trending towards something behind 95L developing. So here we have it now. So there is more certainty of us having a second development after 95L or even if 95L does not develop it is likely that we will have some development taking place afterwards and now here we have this disturbance and so we're going to be talking about it in depth we'll be talking about the conditions the probability of it developing and ultimately the areas that are to be affected in the Caribbean or after the Caribbean and so guys before I go into details with these systems Alright guys, and so first up, let us talk about 95L. So as of right now, 95L still has a 40% chance to develop. So the chance has been quite stagnant for quite a while, guys. So we've not seen much change in it. The system is not in an entirely favorable environment to support it to develop well or develop rapidly. So it is possible that this thing here doesn't develop. But regardless, if you're in the Lesser Antilles by the midweek going down to the latter part of this week, you will experience some inclement weather as a result of this system here because it is going to be enhancing the rainfall and worse if the system is quite disorganized because that is going to mean that the rainfall is more widespread across the eastern caribbean so if you're anywhere in the eastern caribbean the lesser antilles uh, i would even say puerto rico and hispaniola because this thing here is expected to generally begin to move to the northwest after it enters the eastern caribbean so if you're in any of those regions please be aware of that and not long after that we could have another system so let us talk about the model intensity guidance for 95 Ellen. So here we have quite a bit of models available and we have most of them agreeing that this will develop into a tropical storm. We have two taking it up to be in a category one hurricane but it isn't impossible but conditions are likely to be too hostile for this system to intensify much even if it is going to develop and again guys development is not guaranteed. And so in terms of its on satellite viewers seen here that it is looking relatively compact uh, but as I said it's really going to be having a hard time to develop because of some unfavorable conditions that it is going to be encountering. And so guys now let us move on to, to our new disturbance so this is not yet designated as an invest but once there is more favorability for it to develop it will be and when it does it is going to be invest 97 l and so at this time it has a 20 percent chance of developing through the next five days and so the system is expected to generally move to the west and begin to move to the west northwest when it is going to be approaching the lesser and least so not long after 95 l maybe about two days or so afterwards we could have this thing here threatening the Caribbean and the problem is most of our models I'm going to be showing you guys what three runs are showing are expecting that this thing here is going to develop into a tropical cyclone and be maybe significant and so we're going to be talking about it uh, in detail very shortly but let's take a look at the wind shear map and so looking at this map here the different colors indicate different shear intensity so when you're going from the oranges to the reds and that pinkish shade right there the wind shear is much stronger but going to like the yellows going down to that blue the wind shear is weak and weak shear is what accommodates tropical activity because when the shear is strong what it does is really rip up the systems and prevent them from growing and intensifying and so we're seeing here that in the Caribbean we do have a bit of oranges which indicate that the shear is not entirely favorable uh, and then 95L is going to be crossing over first so most likely it is going to be encountering this maybe marginally conductive shear for it to develop but afterwards when we have that new disturbance moving in conditions could be a bit more favorable for it to develop and intensify and so now let us look at what our models are predicting in terms of both of these systems so first up is the GFS model and so this is Wednesday the 30th of June and so guys this is a map showing the isobars which are lines of equal pressure and the closer you see them in a circular manner with the pressure below 1030 millibars especially in the main development region is usually a tropical cyclone and in case you're curious uh, well it is said in the title of this video but the next two names to be used for this hurricane season are Elsa 
and Fred. And so guys, let us take a look at what the GFS is anticipating. So this is Wednesday the 30th and we have it showing that 1013 millibar system making its way uh, probably starting to affect the lesser Antilles with some very inclement weather conditions. And then it is showing that we're going to be having our new wave or new area of interest right there becoming a little bit more organized. So let's go further out and see what's ex what is expected. So this is Friday, the 2nd of July. And so GFS has 95L really becoming uh, maybe just a cluster of shower and thunderstorm activity. Nothing much. And showing it making its way across the Eastern Caribbean. But take a look. Is that probably a tropical storm behind it? So in this case, if what the GFS is showing is the outcome, we're going to be having our new disturbance becoming Tropical Storm Elsa. But again, it is not guaranteed to happen. We really have to wait and see. So let's go further with the modeling. So this is Sunday the 4th of July. And there we have that system making its way approaching the central caribbean and so let us go further this things are getting quite interesting here so a 987 millibar low pressure system and that is potentially a strong tropical storm i would say probably close to being hurricane strength uh by the fourth and then going to the fifth on Monday, we see that 980 millibar low pressure system just a bit to the south of Jamaica, probably affecting the island. And so this would be quite interesting to see. So my fellow Jamaicans, you really want to pay attention to the system as time goes by. But again, this is not guaranteed to take place. This is just what one model is showing. But based on that shaded cone area that the National Hurricane Center has, that seems to be the path that the system is going to be taking. So the more the system is low latitude and begin moving to the northwest after it emerges into the Caribbean, the more we are likely to be in trouble here in Jamaica. Let's go on to CMC. And so this is Wednesday the 30th. And so CMC has 95L just being a wave enhancing the shower activity across the eastern Caribbean. And it is showing that other system there may be trying to get itself together. Let's go further and see what the model is showing. And then this is uh, July 2nd. So it is showing 95L making its way across the Caribbean and showing it moving uh, south of Jamaica. But it is showing that other wave making its way toward the, the Lesser Antilles. And then as we go further out to Sunday, it is showing that that new wave not developing, but it is going to be making its way over Jamaica. One more model showing this thing here headed for Jamaica. And then it is showing 95L affecting portions of Central America. Now let us move on to NavGem. So this is Thursday the 1st of July. And so there we have NavGem showing uh, that 95L is going to be making its way across the Lesser Antilles. And then showing a broad area right there of disorganized shower and thunderstorm activity. And, so, and then as we go to Saturday the 3rd of the month, we see that 95L making its way over the, less, the Greater Antilles and then that new wave moving across the Windward Islands. Then as we go further out to Sunday the 4th, uh, it is showing that that new wave there is going to be south of Jamaica, maybe trying to get itself together, but does not show much development. So what summary or what conclusion can be drawn from this based on what those three of our models are predicting? Well, it is certainly possible that we will have these systems entering the Caribbean and the Lesser Antilles will be affected by this. This is no longer a question in my opinion. If you're in the Lesser Antilles, you will be impacted. Regardless of them developing or not, you will be impacted. So please be prepared for maybe increased shower and thunderstorm activity as we head into the end of this week. And as for the models showing that that new area of interest making its way to Jamaica I can't say for sure that that is going to be the eventual outcome but we really have to be cautious here guys we really have to always stay prepared and know what is going on and of course I will keep you updated as time goes by guys and so we really have to wait and see what the eventual outcome of these systems are is going to be because we have them both threatening the Caribbean and we really have to pay attention to it because anything can happen with these systems and they can even surprise us and so guys I will keep you updated as time goes by and so if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be wise and i will keep you updated as time goes by